Mu Sigma is just turning 18, right? So we are becoming an adult right now. We have a driver's license. At this point of time, what we need is grit more than anything else to stay the course uh, by ourselves. I'm going to talk about you know, entrepreneurship in an increasingly complex world. Um, so before I do that, I want to set the stage of what complex actually means so that it will make sense for you. The first half of my talk, uh, I'd like to time it such that about 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, I want to you know, talk about a, uh, how to build a company that's very, very profitable. And if you can build a profitable company that generates a tremendous amount of cash, your ability to not get diluted as much is quite high, which means your negotiating power would be high, which also means at the right time, when you have that opportunity, you can buy back your baby. Because uh, to me, this is one of the, uh, uh, this place is special right now because of you. 400 dreamers here. No, I won't call you dreamers. I would call you doers. 400 doers here, right, in this place who are, uh, who are, who are following your dreams for sure, but it's not just following, you're doing your dreams, right? That's a big deal. And I think that's quite intimidating for me uh, to say something that makes sense for people like you who are so already so motivated, you're giving up things to do what you're doing, right? So it's a very, it's a very humbled to be in front of you right now. Uh, over the last 18 years, our journey has not been um, a clean journey. It's been an ups and downs journey. It's never a, and when I look back, um, I can I can tell you a lot about uh, the mistakes I have made. And uh, that scar tissue I carry very dearly on me because that's the scar tissue that's going to help me uh, pay it forward to you guys and make sure that uh, you make new mistakes because in the end of the day, we we'll all should be making new mistakes. One of the themes that I will bring to the table is that life is nothing but interactions. It's not the entities, but the interactions. So I was, uh, when I saw Suresh the first time, a little bit, I said, oh, I love your name. And uh, the way I think about life is, life is nothing but a bunch of kisses, right? A kiss doesn't happen till it happens. And when it happens, it's happened, right? I think this concept of emergence is uh, like that. And you're gonna, so one of the things that happens is emergence. Emergence, now Tamil, I'm going to mix three languages, Hindi, English, and uh, to, to talk, because I spent my time half in Bombay and half in uh, Chennai. I'm a uh, Ananagar Kilpok boy, and I uh, played at the TNCA ecosystem cricket, and thank God I was not good enough for cricket, otherwise Mu Sigma would not be built. But, uh, uh, so, uh, so, so with that perspective, let me start the, start the talk and start by introducing this word complex, what it means to all of us. So what we want to talk about today is two things, guys. One, the problem space today. Let's understand the nature of the problem space, okay? And the second thing we want to talk about is the role of the founders in the ecosystem because we, at a high level, we solve problems. That's what we do, right? So with that in perspective, I want to understand this word complex in as simple perspective as possible, right? So when you see the world, let's look at it in two dimensions. The first dimension is you don't know what to do. And Second is, you don't know how to do it, right? So that's the two dimensions. So with those two dimensions, when you look at it, when what to do and how to do is quite certain, 
you know, that world is simple. In that world, you automate. A world of simple problems needs automation, right? Like, for example, how to go to church. You know, in our world today, you can say, hey, you know, these are the various steps. You can go to church that way. That is a simple problem, and it will eventually be automated. It's already automated. Nowadays, you don't have to talk to anybody about it. Now, next is what to do is certain, but how to do it is not certain. In that world, like an example could be, hey, how do I get married inside the church? Right? Now, you need a priest for that. He will say a few things. Vadhyarveno, you know, Kovilla. You know, so you need all of those kind of, so some experts are needed. So these experts come and they will take some, some steps they are needed. In that case, you will need some experts at some point of time, right? That's compli you know, complicated. Now, the third stage is what to do and how to do are uncertain. That world is complex. How to stay married? It's a complex problem, okay? I can tell you that, right? So, <laughs> that world, you have to try out a few things. First time it may not work out, second time it may work out, you know? Some of us may have to go through four or five times, right? But you have to explore using experimentation, right? There's no other choice around that. Now, what's the black place? That black place is unacceptable. That is what I call simplistic. That's the fool's paradise. What to do is not certain, but I'm very sure about how to go do it. Right? That means I don't know where I'm going, but I'll go surely. Right? So that perspective is a dangerous place. Don't be in fool's paradise. Right? So this perspective, with this perspective, when you see how does this manifest, and I'll talk about the B2B world. My customers are um, the number one, number two, number three companies in 10 different industries. So I'm talking about people who are 50 to $200 billion in revenue and so on and so forth, right? Talking about Microsoft, talking about Chevron, talking about Bristol Myers Squibbs, talking about Allstate Insurance. These are the customers that I typically work with. So that's where my learnings are from. So from that perspective, I'm going to kind of like when you see this patient called the problem, the problem is like a patient, it's coming to your door, okay? You want to be a good doctor, right? So you want to make sure you know you're not solving the wrong disease. You know, the guy is saying, I have a problem in my kidney, and you go and do a brain surgery on him, it's a problem, right? So with that perspective, you know, these are some ways to look at that patient called the problem. Is the problem space homogeneous? versus heterogeneous. Is, does it have very linear effects, non-linear effects? I'll let you read it slowly, okay? What you will see is that these things are connected to each other, okay? One is deterministic, the problem space. The other is probabilistic, right? Things are happening, things are changing quite a lot, you know? Static versus dynamic. No, the one, when you have deterministic and probabilistic, the static versus dynamic will also happen. Feedback loop versus no feedback loop, right? And the last thing I'm going to talk about is connected. You'll see this concept of complexity is very connected to graphs. What are graphs? A graph is a kiss. Why is a graph a kiss? Because it's when nodes kiss edges, a graph gets created, right? It's, I used to say interaction, now I'm going to say kiss, because uh, i got to be nice to Suresh, right? So that's what's easy, right? Because kiss is an interaction, right? So when a, gra when a node kisses uh, 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 an edge, a graph gets created. And graphs are very important to understand complexity. There's an area of science called complexity science. 2021, the Nobel Prize for Physics went to somebody in complexity science. So it's a real science. Okay, better start learning that very, very quickly. Data science is over. It's a dinosaur. The future is decision science. Okay, AI, machine learning, all of these 
are buzzwords in my mind. I always joke about the fact that the only real AI is artificial insemination. Okay, Baki all fake AI, right? So my perspective is one should not be, because we, we used to be called uh, an analytics company first, then we were called a big data company, then we were called an AI and machine learning company. I mean, nowadays they like to call us AI and machine learning. I don't mind it, especially when somebody is buying my shares, I don't mind you calling me whatever, but when I'm buying the shares back, I'd really call it what it is, okay? <laughs> It's very, very important whether you're buying your shares back or you're selling your shares. Correct, entrepreneurs? So, from that perspective, what is this? This is decision sciences in my mind. The world is decision sciences. We are helping people make decisions. That's the outcome. Never define things by inputs and outputs. Define things by outcomes. Because if you define things by inputs, you would say, uh, data, data engineering, this, that, you know, snowflake, all of those kind of things you'll say. If you say uh, outputs, you'll say AI, machine learning, descriptive, inquisitive, predictive, prescriptive, all of those kind of things. If you say outcomes, you'll say inventory management, replenishment, collaborative planning. So problems better see it as outcomes. Don't see it as inputs and outputs, right? So with that perspective, you, when a complex problem comes, first thing first, know how to identify it. Okay? And don't solve a complex problem in a simple and complicated manner. That's, that becomes bad. So I want to give you a framework. This is an original framework, okay? Uh, uh, you know, which means it's mine. Okay? I built it. And true, it could be wrong. Okay, those are the two things to keep in mind. This is an original framework, right? Now, how does complexity manifest in organizations? And why does it favor kisses over, I don't know the other word for it, but interactions over entities? Why does it favor kisses? Okay, let me tell you, why does it favor graphs? Why does it favor nodes and edges? So when you look at the problem space as how frequently the problems occur and how much impact the problem made, when you look at it in these two dimensions, how many times did it happen? And when it happened, how bad was it? Okay, so common cold, it happens. That's it's, The name itself is called common and cold, right? Common means how it happens commonly and cold, it's, cold it's, it is what it is, right? So that area is the barren desert of low return, you don't care about it too much. Comes and goes, you don't care about it. The second area, I want to talk about the green area, is the fertile land of disproportionate return. It can happen in high frequency or high impact or both. When they come, you're like, oh, macha. You know, we got to do this. You know? But the fertile land of disproportionate return the number of people chasing that problem space is too many. All these guys go behind them. Finally, somebody will get it. Right? So, that world, the fertile land of disproportionate return, lands up being the fertile land of disappointing return. Okay? Then what is remaining is that in-between river. That river, I call it the river of reasonable return. The river of reasonable return is not one or two big problems, but many, many, many small problems that are interacting with each other. Great movies have a lot of character actors, Shole. Shole is an interaction between Sanjeev Kumar, you know, Dev and Viru, Amitabh Bachchan, Dharmendra, Basanti, Hangal, Sachin. You, even the smallest actor makes it a, in, important in the character, a movie like Shole. It's a bunch of interactions that are happening and together in that interactions, interesting things are happening. Right? So that perspective of how these interactions happen, how do you study interactions is going to become important. How do you study a kiss? It's going to be very, very important. Because you go and bite the lip, it's not a kiss. Right? You got to feel something and you got to other person should feel something. Both of those things have to happen and when it emerges, it's beautiful. But it better emerge. Amayano. Tamil Amayar this will wanga. Amayar dina amanjudu. 
What that means is it happened in Tamil. There's no better word. The word of emergence is very hard to explain in many languages. Now, in that a world, a river of reasonable return should not be solved as entities. It should be solved as interactions. How those things are connected to each other. Okay, how inventory management, replenishment, collaborative planning, pricing, forecasting, how are they connected to each other? It's in the connections that the game is played. So, you need new ways to see those connections. You need a new way of seeing that problem space itself. But what do we do? We go and solve one dot at a time. We see the world as stars and we don't see the world as constellations. Sir, I have one thing for you. What will do? It will make sure that for your mush, I have a special dye. Huh? Oh, dyeing mush, that's a great thing. I have something else for you, sir. It will remove nostril hair. You know, I mean, the, when you take each problem so to one by one by one and solve it, you don't get the maximum end-to-end -end impact. How you connect the dots together is going to be important. So this area needs, if you look at high frequency, low impact, you need it to be algorithmic. You need to do many, many times. It's one small thing can happen many, 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 many times. And therefore, that is algorithmic. So as you go from top bottom to bottom, it's algorithmic to heuristic. When it happens very little times, like for example, I might go public only once, right? Then I need a banker. That's more services. So the paradigm for top is software or software as a service. The paradigm for the bottom is pure service. But today's world is a combination of algorithmic and heuristic. A combination of man and machine. It's not Superman anymore. It's not, you know, uh, uh, the robot also. It's Iron Man. It's man and machine working with each other. So that concept of Iron Man needs to be thought about and that allowed us to scale because services scale well but at the same time be profitable. So we got two things. We got propensity for annual recurring revenue and we got profitability which meant that we didn't have to take that OPM drugs called venture capital money in a large amount of money. That OPM, once you are addicted to it, then, sir, I need one more, sir, I need one more, sir, I need one more, sir. You know, you will be in that mode. And we'll be in this world of valuation and not value. Valuation is not value, huh? So that perspective is very, very, very important. So never get addicted to that OPM. Build profitable company, pro-fit. I am pro being fit. I am not pro being unfit. Right? So profit is important. I am scared for Indian entrepreneurship today. Because I see us celebrating people taking in money. More than giving people money back. Right? Ah, oh, you raised so much money. Wow, wonderful. You got addicted to more opium. Right? So, that perspective, the new, at least in B2B, the new world is service as a software. If there are VCs in this world, I'm sure they're taking an egg and throwing at me. That's fine. I'll, you know, so that's completely all right. <laughs> right? So, uh, but, but that's the game I feel is being played. Right? Now, in this world of highly complex world, we are moving into this new paradigm of how to do problem solving. That interaction-based problem solving is not just about executing and exploiting. It is exploring, executing, and exploit, exploiting. You have to acknowledge the complexity. If the guy is coming and it's a complex problem, acknowledge it. Say it for what it is. Construct a really, really good question. Decisions are a kiss between questions and answers. It's a kiss. When questions make love to answers, decisions get created. Right? How do you make them do that? Right? That's very, very important. How do you ask a really good question? You have to learn that. You have to have a variety of problem solvers. You can't have the same kind of people solving problems. You have to have many, many kinds. The world is going from test cricket to one-day cricket to 2020. The same events are taking place in a constrained amount of time. As that is happening, what's going to happen is you're going to need a lot more all-rounders. You're going to need a wicketkeeper batsman. You're going to need people to 
evolved to do new things in different ways. The things that you considered blasphemy in test cricket, you might have to do it, reverse sweep, this, that. New strokes, strokes have to be created. And in such a world, the game will change very differently. 183 was the test score that we protected for World Cup 1983. Right? Today, 183, uh, Dhoni and these people are hitting as if when they are sleeping in 20 overs. Right? So the game has changed very differently because we have moved from a world of bigger is better to a faster is better world. We have moved from economies of scale to economies of speed. We have moved from products and services to experiences. What's an experience? It's a kiss between a product and a service. Right? It's an interaction between a product and a service. And that means you've got to learn kissing. You've got to learn interactions. Right? So that's going to be very, 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 very important. So with that perspective, what you need is not experts for sure, but what you need is also not generalists. I have a new word which I've invented called horizontalist. You need a horizontalist. A horizontalist, again, looks at the world and says that, how confident am I? Okay? And how skilled am I? How much, how much I can, you know, um, how much I know stuff. And that world of confidence and competence, when you look at it, where should you be? Typically, people will say, we should be somewhere in between and you should go in this road. This road is there and there's gravel in this road. Okay, there's gravel here and then there's the road. Now, the gravel has some value to it. I'll tell you what that value is a little bit. How many of you have driven in United States? So you know when you're going in the edge, you'll have a rumble. Okay? That rumble tells you, oh shit, I'm going outside the road. Okay? That rumble comes because of the gravel. The tire hits the gravel and it becomes a rumble. Right? So the road, we don't know this road is exactly where it should be. So what's the right path to take? You're a blind man and you need to go in this road. We all know we are blind. Right? We, we are facing complex problems. And therefore, it's very, very hard to know exactly how confident we can be, how skilled we can be. So the best path to take is this path which I call flow, which is kiss flow, right? Which basically, <laughs> you know, where you could take this risk taking for some time, where you operate with a lot more confidence than you should. Over, you operate in an overconfident world and then you then operate you know, in a world to risk mitigation world. So you operate overconfidence, risk mitigation, overconfident, risk mitigation, overconfidence. That's better than saying that I'll be somewhere. The balance is not important anymore. It's the harmony that is important. So the world is not balance, but the world is harmony where risk taking and risk avoidance become together. And for that to happen, you cannot be a generalist. You have to be a horizontalist. Horizontalist is all about connecting various topics, not knowing a lot about some topics. But connecting, even if I don't know some things, I want to connect. And the way I'll connect is I'll go talk, ask questions, all of those kind of things. So the world of the future is horizontalists. Now, in such a world, when you take a risk, if you're a big company, you are asking this question, is it worth doing something and can it be done? And when you ask it in that manner, you got to go from a state of inaction where you're afraid to a state of action. How do you go from inaction to action? The one thing that comes in the way of moving is fear. And Rumi said, said this beautifully, I'll say this again, fear is the non-acceptance of uncertainty. When I have uncertainty and I don't accept it, then it's fear. And when it becomes, when you are accepting your uncertainty, it becomes adventure. I'm going to talk about how to convert fear to adventure in a bit. In 10 minutes, I will give you this perspective of a magic thing to give, make convert fear to adventure. Okay. But before that, you have to understand this guy called Feynman. He talks about what you feel when you are faced with a complex problem. Feynman is a Nobel laureate. 
while being this Nobel laureate, he's going to talk about when he faces problems, how he feels. And some of us as entrepreneurs will also be feeling that. And I'll show you how he feels. He describes it very beautifully. When you're thinking about something you don't understand, you have a terrible, uncomfortable feeling called confusion. It's a very difficult and unhappy business. And so most of the time, you're rather unhappy, actually, with this confusion. You can't penetrate this thing. Now, is it the confusion is because we're all some kind of apes that are kind of stupid, working against this, uh, trying to figure out to put the two sticks together to reach the banana, and we can't quite make it, the idea. And you know, I get that feeling all the time that I'm an ape trying to put the two sticks together. So I always feel stupid. Once in a while, though, every, the, the, banana, the sticks go together on me, and I reach the banana. So... So we feel like monkeys when we are faced with these complex problems. It's nothing bad to feel like that. It's actually a good thing. If you're feeling confusion and if you're feeling low and if you're feeling a little fearful, it's not such a big problem. It's actually a good thing. You know that you're, you, are, you can appreciate your complexity and you are discovering your ignorance. The feeling of confusion is the feeling that comes before a discovery of ignorance. What I don't know, I know. That feeling is the discovery of ignorance. And before that feeling, I should feel confusion. Okay. So the industry, most of the problem-solving paradigms were solved as left hand and right hand. Or man slips and woman slips. Now I have to change all my analogies for him. Right? But they were solved as left hand and right hand. Right? Why? Because... In that world, it was the left hand and right hand solving problems. But today, because it's kisses, because it's interactions, it's the clap. The clap is an interaction between the left hand and the right hand. In that world, in the industrial era world, that we have lived in most of the time, you had inputs, practitioners did the inputs, outputs, expectations were set by business, and then they came together and they said, let's actually hopefully the left hand and right hand will meet and hopefully we'll have enough time to make them meet so you'll do something like this slowly and get them to meet okay because you have time in the industrial era now in the information era when you don't have time you gotta have a, the, a world like this where you have the yin and the yang there is no more practitioner and there's no more business which means that business and practitioner will become together They'll become one, first thing. Yin, yang, advaita, not two, but one. Okay, I'm slowly going to shift from physics to philosophy. Indian mysticism, as you'll see this shift slowly. It'll go to, as it happens, the yin, yang happens. And in that yin, yang, you have explore, execute, e uh, exploit. What, it, what I mean to say that, you have, you have when your coin is there, like, coin ricket. You know, apna shole, diva, shole wala coin. You know, jo hai, jo jay, upar toss karta hai. And in his coin, it's a rigged coin. Both sides are heads. But that shole coin, when it is standing, it is heads. You know that. But when you're spinning it, you don't know what it is. It's not heads, not tails. It's spinning. The world is spinning right now. In the spin, there is no explore, there is no execute, there is no exploit. It's all together. It's all kissing, it's all interacting. And in such a world, you gotta have a lot more explore and a lot little execute and exploit. Okay, that's the new world. Lot more explore, lot little execute and exploit. Now, such a world, in such a world, what, are our, what is our role? Okay, this is where it becomes philosophical. This is where I had a choice to take this company public, take 500 to 700 million dollars, you know, in valuation, and, and I don't know what I'll do with it, I'll probably give 100 BMWs, right? But, or, yeah, yeah, yeah but it's even better, right? So I'm, I'm a little stingy, so, you know, <laughs> see, I'm, I'm still, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 or you got a, uh, in such a world, what is our role as founders? That's something we have to ask, ask ourselves, okay? So for me, that choice was either go plus 500, plus 700 as wealth, 
or minus 220 in loan. Okay, which meant I feel like an 18 year old who just, I'm still feeling like a child. Should I give up my dream or should I build this just because the, uh, the investors, their fund life is over and I have to, they have to exit. And when I thought about that, I said that my dream was better than, more important than anything else. So I decided that I'm not going to take this wealth now and I'm going to invest back into myself as an 18 year old who's still thinking like a child, right? So that perspective meant that we have to understand this game to really, really make that choice. For me, it was easy to make that choice. I'll tell you, for some of you, you might think, why is he, you're, you're an entrepreneur, you should be taking risk. But what we do many times is we take the risk and then we get scared and then we take money. Okay, that's like saying, you know, that's like being like this uh, high-end model. I'll eat, then I'll throw up. I'll eat and throw up just to be thin, you know. So my perspective is never take money to mitigate risks. Take money to take more risks. Okay, that's the way to be thinking about because your business is taking risks. That's what your business is as entrepreneurs. So first is, let's understand this thing called money. Money. What is money? Money is nothing but value that was created in the past. Somebody did some work somewhere and value got created and that is money. Okay, that sits in a pension fund. Then it goes to a venture capital private equity firm. Those guys are agents of the money. They are not, it's not their money by the way. They are just agents. They are a pipeline. Okay, and they take a commission when that money comes to you. Okay, that's the, that's the, that's the value from the past. So what is value that will get created in the future? Value that will get created in the future is nothing but ideas and talent that holds that ideas. Okay, right now, this is my equation. The kiss between the past and the future. Let me understand that kiss a little better. Okay, so you have money chasing ideas, that's called investment. My talent chasing money, that's called employment. Agreed? So far you're with me? Simple? Now in that perspective, guys don't worry about, I'll give you these slides. So you don't have to worry about it, okay? So, in such a world, money is chasing talent, talent is chasing money, investment, you know, employment. Here, the money is daring you. You know, do it and show me boss. There is a challenge. It is daring. Right? Ideas, talent, dreaming. So, dreaming and daring. These two things are happening. But, Something interesting is happening in entrepreneurship. Let me tell you what is entrepreneurship in my mind. How I define entrepreneurship for myself. When I define entrepreneurship, I define it like this. There's a past. There are people who are people, prisoners or preservers of the past. They value the money. They have valued it. They have a fiduciary duty towards that money. They have to give so much IRR. Okay. They have to keep getting IRR for them. And there is dreams in the employees, in the people, that's dreams. They have dreams for a beautiful future, right? What is the machine that makes the past, crunches the past and makes it a future? What's that machine? It's nothing called the present, right? This present is a kiss between the past and the future, right? That kiss is happening here. Now, in this world, the resources are coming in, into the present. Ideas are coming in into the present from the future through imagination, the exchange of value is taking place. That's entrepreneurship. It's the marketplace between investors and employees. It's the marketplace between past and future. It sits in the present. And in that present, there is no dreaming and there is no daring anymore. There is only doing. In doing, there is no more daring and dreaming. It all becomes one. The, the coin is spinning at that time. There's no heads and tails, right? That's the world I dream about creating more. So that perspective meant that you got to understand chaos. 
There is ordered past because you can order it properly. There is ordered future because you can order it properly. But in the present, there's only chaos because it's a single point. There's a spinning, there's chaos happening. Heads becomes tails and tails becomes heads. And in that chaos is where you are doing as an entrepreneur, you are filled with confusion. You're filled with pain. You are supposed to have pain. You are supposed to love pain. An employee can say, when I am unhappy, I can shift and get a job. An investor can say, when I am unhappy, I can shift into a new company. You, as an entrepreneur, are never supposed to be happy. You are supposed to stay with the pain. That's your role. You can have pain, but you can't have misery. When you love your pain, it can never become misery. And that's very, 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 very important. You gotta love your pain. And that world comes to me from Eastern mysticism. Okay. For me, it has three parts. The investors, Vishnu, preserving the past or prisoners of the past. He's always sleeping, you know. He'll have, you can have, that's happening there. You can have small investor, big investor, angel, private equity, venture capital, all of those different versions, different avatars they have. Rama, Krishna, Vishnu, everything. But they are Vishnus. And you have Brahmas imagining the future. And in between is operating in the present, which is a Shiva. Okay. And that's why Shiva is very interesting from an entrepreneur perspective. He has, a, he has to drink the poison and hold it in his neck. Okay. He has to drink the poison and hold it in his neck. You know, you can't like, you can't be in the business of that. And you'll see that Vishnu will be thinking about capital, Lakshmi. Shiva will be the creator, Brahma will be thinking about uh, uh, knowledge. You know, it's, it's as uh, Java, the, the Allah, Panla, the Panla, the Panla, the Panla. But Shiva has to be thinking about risk and Shakti, energy, bringing energy to that. That's the yin yang. Okay. Every slide will be available, guys, for you. Okay, don't worry. So, scarcity, photo So, you know, I think when you see it in this manner. Then I will tell you again how to convert fear to adventure. Now, that has something to do with the Nataraj Tandav. What is Shiva doing? He is dancing. He is dancing. He is not sitting, oh, I am afraid. You know, he is dancing. Okay. That guy, fear is the non-acceptance of uncertainty. If we accept, it becomes an adventure. Creativity, when it has fun, intelligence, when it has fun, is called creativity. Einstein said it. We are saying, I am saying as an entrepreneur, when you have fear and you can have fun, it becomes adventure. When you are fe I'm not asking you to be fearless. Don't be fearful, but feel full while being in fear. Feeling full, right, while being in fear is very, very important. That's my email, that's my WhatsApp number. Take this photograph, it might be more useful. <laughs>